David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. So my daughter got out of hospital today, this afternoon. If you're in Australia and you have kids, don't fuck around with doctors. Just go straight to a fucking hospital. Go to a children's hospital. There's going to be pediatricians there. There's going to be fucking caring nurses. Fucking shout out to nurses. As much as GPs continually astound me with how shit they are, nurses are exactly the opposite. They continually astound me with how fucking great they are. Shout out to all the nurses out there. You should be getting paid more. Whatever you're getting paid, it should be fucking more. The nurses do all like the slog work, all the caring, all the loving shit, all the personal stuff. And then the doctors swoop in for a couple of minutes of glory. Hey, I'm the doctor. I'm just going to tell the nurse what to do. Now, the doctors at the hospital were fucking good too, but the nurses are always the best. But seriously, cut out the fucking middleman. Just go straight to the fucking hospital. Your taxes are fucking paying for it anyway. I think a lot of people are taking that advice already because the fucking waiting room at the fucking children's hospital was fucking packed. There was like 14 kids in this small waiting room, all catching fucking diseases off each other, spreading it. There was like 20 on the ward as well. It was fucking busy. And one of the doctors was saying it's real fucking busy this year because fucking of the lockdowns and the kids haven't been getting sick for the last year. And now it's winter. The flu's back and it's a hardcore flu and the kids' defenses are down and the kids are dropping left, right and center. The flu's meant to be bad this year. Fucking Izzy Ali, my mate, comedian, oppression chamber host, Izzy Ali has been down for like the last 10 days with the fucking flu. Either the flu or Ebola, who fucking knows what it is. But he's down, he reckons it's fucking hectic. I'm not worried about the flu at all. Not for myself anyway, for you guys I'm worried. It sounds like a bad one, but for me, I don't get the flu. Even when I actively... <laughs> Even when I actively try and get it, I don't get the flu. But maybe my immunity's down from the last couple of years. Although I did spend a year in India, my immunity's probably pretty strong. I heard there's a new fucking thing to be scared of. Monkeypox or some shit. Is anyone jumping on board that one? Monkeypox? Are we going to shut down the entire world for that one? What are the symptoms of monkeypox? The same as COVID? Monkey pox, monkey pox, monkey pox. <laughs> it is 17 times worse than the chicken pox. I'm sure monkey pox has been around for years, but uh, it was a good move choosing monkey pox because that is definitely a scarier animal than chicken. If they said there's a bad case of the chicken pox, everyone would be like, shut the fuck up, no one cares. I'll just dab that pink shit on me and I'll fucking go to work. I don't care. I'll spread it. I'll rub up on some cunts on the fucking train. I don't care. Monkey pox? That sounds exotic. So the federal election's been over in Australia for like four days and I've listened to the fucking news twice. And the first time I heard fucking monkey pox and the second time today I heard at the end of some fucking news report and 1.3 million Australians are now eligible for their fourth COVID-19 vaccine. I'm like, uh, everyone in Australia has had COVID now, except me. The fourth vaccine is going to be a hard sell, even for diehards. Even for fucking I love the science groupies, the fourth one is going to be a tough sell. I've even got to stop listening to the move on the fucking peripheral. Peripheral. If you fucking ask me how to spell peripheral, let alone pronounce it. If you ask me to pronounce peripheral <laughs> to save my fucking life, I would still come up with that. You can't even listen to it on the fucking peripheral. Peripheral? Peripheral. Peripheral. That's one of those words that if I was out in public and I wanted to use that word, I just wouldn't use it because I knew I wouldn't fucking be able to land it. I would just say, I can't even watch the news anymore from the corner of my eye. And the person will be like, you mean from your peripheral? Peripheral. How the fuck do you even spell it? All right, let's see. P? <clears throat> R. E. R. If. Per. If. Hmm. 
I P H Oh yeah peripheral peripheral in my peripherals so it actually does sound retarded when you say it it's not just me peripherals anyway fucking whatever i just can't watch the fucking news anymore it's too fucking depressing it gets me too fucking angry which leads me into this week's boil breaks history it's not really a boil breaks history it is a it's not a conspiracy cop it's a what was the thing I was doing at the start? Boyle Explains or some shit like that, which turned into Boyle Breaks History and Conspiracy Cop. I can't remember. It was like fucking 700 days ago. Anyway, this is Boyle Explains. What's been doing my head in for months now is inflation. I can't get over inflation. What it really is and what it really means So allow Professor Boyle to give you a quick lecture on inflation. Now, what everyone has been hearing in the news is inflation is like 5.5%, 7%, 8.5%, depending on where you live. Type of inflation they're talking about is CPI inflation, Consumer Price Index And how they calculate this inflation is possibly one of the greatest scams in fucking human history, besides the actual monetary system. So how they find the CPI is the government has what they call a market basket. It's just a basket of goods and services the fucking government chooses. That's a very important point. The government chooses the basket of goods and services. So it can be fucking anything. It can be bananas. It can be a fucking pack of condoms, eggs, milk, a fucking rub and tug. Just a basket of random goods the government chooses. And then what they do, they find out the CPI fucking don't worry about that at all. All you need to worry about is how they work out inflation basically is... The change in price over time of this select market basket of random goods the government chooses. And they can choose anything they feel like. They can choose, let's say, like a McDonald's hamburger. Maybe that's gone up like 10 cents over a year. They could choose like bananas, which have gone up fucking, I don't know, 10% or something. They could choose, let's say, for example, property as one of their goods and services they could choose fucking fuel there's another good one property's gone up like 25 30 percent fuel's gone up about the same really depends on what these cunts decide to choose in their market basket so they just take a bunch of random goods and services get the price change over a year average it out and come up with some bullshit number of like seven percent They've looked at whatever is convenient and they've come up with that number. They can come up with whatever fucking number suits them. That's the scam of the whole thing. They could choose whatever the fuck they want to meet whatever purpose that they desire. The inflation rate they come up with using this CPI bullshit system is just whatever the fuck they want to come up with. It's a complete fucking scam. So you can basically ignore that number. The CPI fucking inflation, whatever the government's telling you... It is horseshit. Where you want to be looking for true inflation, a true measure of real inflation, is the monetary inflation rate. And all the monetary inflation rate is, how much was the supply of money expanded in a particular year? And all the expansion of money means is, how much more money did the government print compared to the previous year. Now, up until 2020, the monetary supply was being expanded by about 10% a year. So every year, they were just printing 10% more money than there was the previous year, which means that your money, your purchasing power, is worth 10% less every year. That was up until 2020. COVID hit, and the monetary expansion of all the countries, especially in the Western world, just went into fucking hyperdrive. The monetary supply in the US was expanded by 30% in one year. 
It was about the same in Australia. It's a little bit hard to grasp the concept of how printing money makes your money worth less because you don't really feel it day to day. It happens a little bit slower day to day. You're like, oh, shit's getting a little bit more expensive. This is fucked. But you just take the hit. Where that 30% increase in monetary inflation is reflected is in the places where you go to store wealth, which is usually in property, it's in the stock market, I suppose gold, and all those things, the traditional places where you go to store wealth, are up 30% in the last year. It pretty much mirrors the monetary inflation. So if you had a million dollars in the bank at the start of 2020, which I can almost fucking 100% guarantee... 0% of you did, but let's say hypothetically if any of you had a million dollars in the fucking bank at the start of 2020, by the start of let's say 2022, that million dollars would have bought you 30% less stock on the stock market because that has gone up 30% and it would have bought you 30% less house in general. And year on year, this accumulates until your money is worthless. This is what the working poor is about. The buying power of your money reduces every single year until you're pretty much working a full-time job and you're poor. And over a long enough period of time, it doesn't really matter how much money you're earning. If you're not beating the inflation rate, it will eventually effectively become zero over a long enough period of time. And I'm not talking like 300 years here. I'm talking like 10 years. Not even 10 years. Five. Possibly less than that if they keep cranking out this money. It's inflation. It's hyperinflation. It's happened to a fucking hundred countries. It's happened to every civilization on earth. They devalued the currency. Inflation went through the roof. The money became worthless and the civilizations collapse. That's what's happening now. Remember when they used to raise taxes to get something done and everyone would just complain and that government would get voted out because the taxes are too fucking high? Well, they figured out a way to tax you without you fucking noticing. They just printed the money. If they expand the monetary supply by 10%, that's a 10% tax because your money's worth 10% less. It's real fucking insidious and the only thing you can do about it is you've got to find a way to beat inflation. It's the only way. If you don't beat inflation, you're completely fucked. And inflation is much, much higher than they're saying and it doesn't look like any of the governments of the world are putting the brakes on the fucking expansion of the money supply anytime soon. So fucking start looking into how you can store your value outside of the currencies because the currencies are going to collapse. It might take a minute, especially for the US currency to collapse because that's the global fucking reserve currency. But the faith in the dollar is dwindling real fucking quick. And as soon as there's a fucking alternative, a viable alternative that everyone is in consensus with, people will be jumping ship because the fucking dollar... All the dollars everywhere are going to be worth the same amount as the Zimbabwe fucking trillion dollar note eventually. Anyway, that's it for Boyle Explains this week. I hope you can take that lecture and use it and apply it accordingly. If you want to dig a little bit deeper into what the fuck is actually going on with the inflation, look into Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor, S-A-Y-L-O-R. He's a fucking smart dude, not as smart as the boy Al, but he's pretty clever. Anyway, that will do for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around and I'll see you the fuck later.